Hey guys, back with another video. This is probably going to throw you off, uh, but I am wearing my squid hat for the videos. Uh, here to talk about the update for Quasa. So if you guys haven't seen my video, uh, I took the pre-con that was in these colors from the set. I took $40, upgraded and changed the deck. Uh, I wanted to make it a little bit more playable and then also play against my friends decks that they did the same thing basically with. So also apologize if I'm looking around or doing stuff, I have it up on my screen to look at and also ADHD. So anyway, uh, after that was done and we played our decks a few times, I decided I would change it up and do what I thought would be better for the deck overall. Uh, I didn't order any cards. I didn't go out of my way to do anything super special to the deck. I really enjoyed how it played. Uh, so I'll try to go through and explain the cards I added, the cards that have been very impactful, and maybe the reason I don't include certain things. Um, so for instance, the deck is not made to be super fast. I didn't want that. I didn't want to be the person that's a threat right off the bat. Um, the deck plays well at just kind of accidentally winning or kind of building up value pieces that become overwhelming for our opponents. So I like having the deck be a little bit slower, a little bit more off the radar. <clears throat> so uh, start off with Quaza herself, or itself, I don't know. Uh, everybody always talked about it being a worse Necrozar. And I gotta be honest, after playing it more, I kind of like it more. Uh, it, yeah, it doesn't hit each opponent, but I don't have to build the deck to be around Quaza. I could build my own engine uh, that can win with or without her. So having Quaza on the battlefield is a nice value piece. It drains, it's definitely helpful, but it's not necessary. So I really enjoy having it as a commander. Plus, uh, white, black, blue is a cool, interesting color pair. I don't think I own any. No, I think that's my only one. Uh, so we'll start off with, I put Narset, Parter of Veils in here. It's one colorless, two blue, legendary Planeswalker, Narset. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. And if you pay two, you can look at the top four cards of your library, reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them, put it in your hand, put the rest of the bottom of the library in random order. So it's nice just to be able to get a value piece off early. It also makes it so people can't overwhelmingly draw and go too fast for our deck to have a chance not to mention that we have wheels in the deck if we wheel with narset out everybody's gonna be left with one card in hand kind of put the choke hold on the game a little bit <clears throat> so i haven't actually been able to get this card out and do anything with it but worst case scenario it gets a lot of attention it takes away the hate and maybe you get to use its negative two ability to get something so we'll go through the creatures. I'm not 100% sure of exactly which ones were in here before, but I'll explain why they're in here if I can, and a couple added ones. So Flump, colorless and a white, jellyfish defender flying, 0-4. If it's dealt damage, you and target opponent each draw a card. Uh, I think this was already in here. I just got a foil of it, and I put it in its spot. Uh, I like it. You know, it's nice. It's political. You get a draw card. Someone else gets a draw card. You get a ping damage. Um... It pretty much does what our deck wants it to anyway. Illuder, one in a blue, it has shadow, so it can't be blocked except for by creatures with shadow, and it can't block unless the other creature has shadow. Uh, when it deals damage, you loot a card. <clears throat> Sig River Cutthroat, this has done some big work in this deck. Uh, two blue-black hybrids. Uh, it's a Merfolk Rogue, one, three, that at the beginning of each end step, if an opponent lost three or more life this turn, you may draw a card. So this accidentally gets you a ton of draw. If your opponents are already being swung at, you're going to get free draw out of this. Not to mention something as simple as someone fetching a land and shocking it in is going to get you a draw. Um, I think this is kind of an underrated card in general, but in this deck I get a ton of value, which allows me to win on a couple turns early or gets me the land that I was missing, different stuff like that. Uh, Triskaidectophile, one colorless, one blue. By the way, I don't know why it's so hard for me to say random words, but I could say Triskaidectophile easy. Uh, but it's Human Wizard 1-3. It makes it so you have no maximum hand size. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control exactly 13 cards in your hand, you win the game. 
Um, I haven't been able to pull off this. I just think it's a nice piece. It's a nice little addition, a nice side win if I could pull it off. Something that leads the game to an end. Uh, this Copa Guild Mage, one black, one white, human wizard, 2-2. Two, two. You could pay one, a white, and a black, and target creature gains lifelink until the end of turn, which isn't necessarily unvaluable. We have a lot of creatures that could get very big, but the bottom part, one, a white and a black whenever you gain life this turn each opponent loses that much life so if you have a big life gain chunk that's going to come out and you could put this in um for instance um peer into the abyss you're going to draw all those cards your commander is going to deal damage off of all that then you're going to deal damage to everybody uh that's basically why it's in here but the lifelink could pair well with maybe toothy if it gets big with shiraz the sky shark psychosis crawler so there's there's potential for it beyond that. <clears throat> Chasm Soccer, Chasm Skulker, two colorless, one blue. It's a Squid Horror one one. Whenever you draw a card, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Whenever it dies, you create X one one. Blue Squid creature tokens with I one lock where X is the number of plus one plus one counters on Chasm Skulker. Uh, I have not been able to get this card out and do anything with it yet. Uh, I've played about seven or eight test games with this deck. Uh, I just haven't been able to get it out, but I think it's a good card. Marauding Blood Priest, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one. So it's also part of the chain of whenever you lose, they gain. Whenever you gain, they lose. I decided there was no point in me not putting it in there. It's good value for the deck and combo potential. So that's why it's in here. Uh, Min, Wily, Illusionist, 1, 2, Blue. Gnome Wizard, 1, 3. Whenever you draw a card, you put a 1... Whenever you draw your second card each turn... Create a 1-1 one, one blue illusion that gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other illusion you control. And whenever an illusion you control dies, you get to put a permanent with mana value less or equal to that creature's power from your hand onto the battlefield. Uh, another card I really want it to do something, I've just never been able to. So I'm hoping that one day I get to do something with this. Even if it's just put a land out for free, I'm fine with that. Uh, Shadow Mage Infiltrator, 1 blue black, Human Wizard, 1-3 with Fear. And whenever it deals combat damage, you may draw a card. Veto, the Dusk Rose, two colorless, one black. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much. Cliffhaven Vampire, two colorless, one white, one black. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one. So as you can see, a lot of them are just value pieces that sit out there and start draining people until we can do what we need to anyway. Uh, Kamiz is the face commander, I believe, uh, originally. Uh, another creature I've just never gotten to get out and do anything with. But again, we have some creatures that can get big, so I think that she's a good piece to the deck. Um, the potential of swinging in with an unblockable Shiraz is good enough for me to consider it. <clears throat> Notion Thief. <laughs> Two colorless, one black, one blue. It's a flash, human rogue, three, one. If an opponent would draw a card except for the first one, she, he or she would draw in his or her draw steps. Instead, that player skips it and you draw. Uh, I was able to get this uh, with somebody who tried to play i believe it was kinnon or urza no nah, it could have been urza i think it was kinnon and they tried to play an x draw spell when they had infinite mana to draw their library out well he didn't have any counter spells in his hand at the time he was kind of hoping that he would just draw his library out then go for the win with all the counter spells in his hand so i was able to flash out notion thief and instead draw my entire library out which i was then able to use to I believe kill all three of the people at the table because of how the life totals were at the time and my commander was out so notion thief rude card really good for this deck i like it uh i i still can't pronounce it this ornier phage one i your phage only figurage <laughs> three colors one blue squid illusion one two flying it's an illusion which matters slightly i suppose Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Spark Double enters as a copy of a Planeswalker or a creature, except it has a plus one, plus one, and it isn't legendary if it would be. Uh, so basically, copy of the commander is what you aim for with this card. Thought Sponge. Uh, I was able to use this to good use. Three colors, one blue, Sponge, Flash, one, one. It enters Balfour with a one, one counter for the greatest number of cards an opponent has drawn this turn and when it dies draw cards equal to its power uh there was a battle going on between two people i remember and they had uh the one guy had 
Ristic Study and Mystic Remora up, and he drew like 10 to 12 cards in the turn. So as soon as he went to the end step, I was able to flash out the Thought Sponge, which was pretty great for me. I mean, that's a even if it doesn't end up dying right away, it's still a big blocker. And I believe at the end of it, the guy ended up board wiping after he drew the 12 cards anyway. So I was able to flash this out to do that. So then when it dies, I get to draw all the cards, which was nice to like put me back in a decent position after losing my entire board. Uh, toothy, imaginary, friend is the same thing. You just, whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Whenever it leaves, draw a card for each one, one counter on it. The only difference is this is flash and it's only the amount per turn. This is always. Uh, Epicure of Blood, four colorless, one black. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one. Psychosis Crawler, power and toughness equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses life. Shabraz the Sky Shark, this was able to win me one of my games also. Uh, he's three colorless, one blue, one black, or one white, one blue. <clears throat> he's a shark bird. Uh, his partner is red, so I don't have his partner in the deck, but it is important to remember that when you play a partner, you are still able to shuffle your deck if you want, uh, because you fail to find the partner. So, important if it would matter to you and you know what's on top and you don't want it. <clears throat> but, it is a 3-3 three, three flyer that whenever you draw a card, you put a plus one, plus one counter on it, and you gain a life. So, every time you draw... You're going to place a counter on it, gain a life, which then is also going to trigger your other pieces that you already have out. Uh, you can give target human flying, but that's not really going to matter. I, I guess if for some reason you were going to uh, swing in with Notion Thief, then you could give him flying. But the big thing is he becomes a giant flying swinger and or blocker. Uh, Armos, Archive Keeper, four colorless, two blue. This is a creature I've considered cutting multiple times, but I think the potential of it is worth keeping in there until I get a C, at least. Uh, it's a Sphinx 5-5 five, five flyer that whenever you draw a card while your library has no cards in it, instead put five plus one plus one counters on it, and you can pay one, two blue to, to discard three cards from your hand with different names and draw five cards. So the main reason that this is a good card is it's a replacement effect for us drawing the last card in our library. So if for some reason we end up drawing our entire library out if we have armos out we won't draw past that and we won't lose the downside obviously is if someone just kills armos before we go to draw i mean we're dead but still it's an interesting card <clears throat> and Droxkal reaver five colorless one blue one white spirit three five flying double strike with lifelink and whenever you gain life you draw a card when the commander was first uh, revealed this is the card that was spoiled for it that was supposed to be the best card uh, the issue was at the time I believe this card was worth like 13 to 20 dollars or so so I wasn't able to include it in the deck but with the latest printing of uh, I think it's double masters 2022 uh, as you can see the cards a dollar 79 so great piece to have in this deck just in general. So these are the creatures, pretty general. There's a couple I've considered taking out, but like I said, I like how the deck is slower, um, non-threatening until it's an issue and then everyone's dead. <clears throat> we'll move on to the sorceries. Uh, I had a demonic tutor laying around, so we have a demonic tutor in here. Search your library for a card, put it in your hand, shuffle. Windfall, each player discards their hand then draws its cards equal to the greatest number of cards the players discard this way, which is usually us. Uh, Essence Pulse, which is chosen to be a very good board wipe in this deck. Uh, three colorless, one black, you gain two life. Each creature you control gets negative X, negative X until the end of turn where X amount of life you've gained this turn. If you really need to do a big board wipe and you're able to gain a little bit of life before it, that's fine, but the reason I like it is our commander is a three, four. So if we draw per turn, gain the life, then we get to make someone lose life. Then we play this. We're going to give everything negative three, negative three until the end of turn, uh, which is a good board wipe. And in general, it leaves a lot of our boards still alive. As you can see, four toughness, five, five. Uh, most of the draw ones are going to be above it at that point. So I think it's a really good board wipe. Um, <clears throat> Whispering Madness, two colors, one blue, one black, sorcery. Each player discards his or her hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. And it also has Cypher. 
Uh, so just good card. Uh, Austere Command, four colorless, two white, sorcery. You get to choose two. Destroy all artifacts, destroy all enchantments, destroy all creatures with value three or less, destroy all creatures with value four or greater. Uh, I just like that it's a versatile board wipe. Uh, usually I do uh, destroy all creatures with three or less because a couple of our cards are four or greater that are important, plus our commander. Uh, but it is nice to have the option to do four or greater because, you know, Thought Sponge and Toothy can allow us to then draw a ton. The only downside is we have to find a way to protect our commander, but it's good. Uh, Peer into the Abyss, four colorless, three black. This one also won me a game. Um, we were playing and there was all four people left and the guy who had the best board state said, I need to figure out who I think I could beat in a 1v1. So he swung out at the other two opponents and killed them. And he passed to me. And the first thing I did with my commander out was just cast Peer into the Abyss. And he looked at me and he said, good game, shook my hand and scooped up. <laughs> because I drew 40, two cards and then drained him for 42 and then gained 42 and had other triggers on the stack also. Uh, so peer into the abyss with our commander could just almost win us the game as is. Uh, I, it doesn't really necessarily win us the game, but if we're playing a 1v1, it wins us the game unless that person's playing a big life gain deck or they have something stupid going on. Uh, and then after that, we get to position ourselves with the best hand possible. So it's one of the best cards in the deck. So we'll go down to the instance. The instances are the big bread and butter of the deck. I just kind of improved on some of the cards that were already in the deck by putting in better versions of it and things like that. So Brainstorm, draw three, puts you back. Miscast, counter it, uh, instant or sorcery unless they pay three colorless. Swords, exile a creature, they gain life equal to the power. I put a Vampire Tutor in here, instant, search your library for eight card, shuffle your library, put that card on top of it, then you lose two life. Uh, counter spells, counter target spell, Dovin's Veto, can't be countered, counter target non-creature spell. Negate, counter target non-creature spell. Tainted Indulgence, uh, you draw two, discard one, unless there are five or more mono values amongst cards in your graveyard. Uh, Telerian win, one in a blue, discard your hand, draw that many cards. Frantic Search, two colorless, one blue, draw two, discard two, untap three lands. Thirst of Meaning, draw three, then discard two unless you discard an enchantment. <clears throat> Void Rend, uh, one of the newer cards out of Capenna that I thought was really good. Uh, one white, one blue, one black. Can't be countered, destroy target, non-land permanent. So just an instant speed removal. I think it's a fine card. Uh, Dudley Rollick, uh, if you control your commander, you can cast for free, exile target creature. Lethal Scheme, it has Convoke on it, so you could tap creatures to pay for the colorless. So it's a four and or a two uh, that destroys target creature Planeswalker, and then you get a connive with each creature that connive, or that convoked it. So gives us draw, destroys something, pretty much what we want in this deck. Uh, still haven't been able to use this card. I can't remember, I'm pretty sure this was in the original listing of it. Uh, I'm waiting for the day that I get to plagiarize someone and throw them off, but I haven't been able to yet. Uh, until the end of turn, if target player would draw a card, instead that player skips that draw and you draw a card. So I'm waiting for the time that someone says, I'm going to draw 10 cards, and then I say, eh, I'll draw 10 cards. But I haven't been able to get there yet. Uh, Stinging Study, four colors, one black. You draw X, lose X, where X is the mono value of your commander you own on the battlefield or in the command zone. So it's lose four, draw four. And emergency powers, instant speed, shuffle your hand, draw seven. So pretty good plus if you cast it during your main phase you get to put a permanent down for free at seven or less but usually this is just a good instant speed mess with people do the kind of thing that we want to uh, spell so as you can see uh, most of it is kind of a generic chunk of deck that has to deal with life gain value drawing uh, the instant sorcerers and creatures are pretty straightforward in this deck and I think it's nice to just have a deck that isn't convoluted isn't crazy uh, it has combos and it has good potential but nothing too overwhelming um, we'll go down the artifacts we have an elixir of immortality you uh, cast it for one colorless uh, for two colorless 
and tapping it, you may gain five life, shuffle it and your graveyard into your, its owner's library. So nice instant way to give us back all those cards we need just in case. Soul Ring taps for two colorless. Arcane taps for one of our commander's color identity. Azorius, you put one in, you get a white and a blue. Uh, Demir, you put one in, you get a blue and a black. Lightning Greaves gives haste and shroud if it's equipped. Mindstone taps for a colorless or pay one tap sack it to draw a card. Orzov, Signet, put one in, you get a white and a black. Swift Boots, Hexproof and Haste. Uh, Thought Vessel, no maximum hand size and a colorless. Decanter of Endless Water, no maximum hand size and one of any color. And then Almaturitz, All Hammerets Archive, five colorless. If you were to gain life, gain twice so much. If you were to draw, except for the first, draw two instead. So... Overall, the mana is pretty straightforward. The elixir, I'm sure, is pretty straightforward. The protection is pretty straightforward. Uh, really, the archive is the one. Uh, it's amazing. It's an amazing card in almost every deck that it's going to be in, but in this deck, it's insane. It's crazy the amount of life that you can gain off of having this out in the draws because, again, they go hand in hand. So every time I go to draw a card, instead, I'm actually going to draw two cards which because I drew two cards, I would normally drain two and loot and gain two, but I'm actually going to drain two, gain four. Um, so the little potential there of everything you can have can put you out of kill range and can really help you out a lot. People act like gaining life doesn't really matter. It's kind of true depending on what power level you're playing at, but I think that gaining life does. Uh, so last but not least really is the enchantments. Uh, Mystic Remora is in here. Cumulative upkeep of one. Whenever a target opponent successfully casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless they pay four. Mystic Remora is always the pain of everyone's existence, especially if you can get this out turn one. It ramps you a ton. It helps our commander. does everything we want. Uh, wizard class. Uh, all it's ever done for me so far is draw me two cards when I really needed it to, but the last ability to place plus one, plus one counters on a creature every time you draw is not to be slept on. I just haven't had a chance to really get it to pop off. Uh, also, no maximum hand size, so nice card that way. Ristic Study, you already know it. Teferi's Ageless Insight, I haven't been able to do anything with this, but if you were to draw one instead of your first card during your turn, you get to draw two instead. I haven't been able to do anything with it. Triskaidectophobia, three colorless, one black. At the beginning of your upkeep, choose one. Each player with 13 life loses, and then each player loses one life, or each player with 13 life loses, and then each player gains one. Um, I have been able to kill somebody at the table with this, which was really nice. Uh, ended, ended up being kind of a political move, where the guy said, hey, this guy is going to win, if we can't do something about it. I can't stop his combo, but I can do this much damage to him. And then if he does that and I do this, we can get him to 13. And then we were able to set him up to actually lose instead of comboing off the next turn. So in general, <clears throat> I think it's just an interesting, fun card. It gives an alternative way of killing people. It ends up being one of those cards that's mostly just kind of there, but sometimes is really cool. Uh, exquisite Blood, combo piece. Whenever an opponent loses life, you gain that much. Sanguine Bond, the other piece of it. Whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much. Uh, this is the other one that just kind of combos with multiple pieces of our deck. So if we want to, we can always tutor for this at the appropriate time, weigh it out, go for the win. Uh, which is Mastery. Three colorless, three black. Legendary Enchantment. It has Hexproof. It says you can't lose the game. It says whenever you gain life, you draw that many cards. Whenever you lose life for each one life, you lost exile or permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. And when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So the whole point is basically if you can get this out, people aren't usually able to target it. It's not often that somebody has an instant speed, everybody sacrifices an enchantment, which they do exist, but... The whole point of this is basically you get it out, and then you gain a life because you gain a life, you draw a card because you draw a life, card, you gain a life because you gain a life. Combos off of the commander. Uh, I haven't been able to do anything with it yet, but I'm hoping I am one day. And then the land base. I took pretty much what was here. I know I replaced this, so that shouldn't be in here right now. I'll have to figure out what I replaced it with. But I didn't do too much. 
I think I just switched out a couple of the lands I thought were a little slow or not doing too much just to make it a little bit faster. I think I put in Evolving Wilds, the Obscura storefront to help with coloring if I need it. But in general, the lands in this deck have been fine. Like I said, it's a slower deck. Uh, it's not meant to be super fast, so I kind of embrace that. Do the scrying I need to to set myself up, play the bounce lands so that I can have two color or two mono lands that can kind of throw people off and do what we need to while also making sure we have the mono fixing that we need. Um, and having 33 lands hasn't been an issue for me yet because once we're kind of after the first couple lands, we're already setting up our engines, we're already drawing cards because that's what our deck wants to do. So usually I have a land I need to play per turn. Um, overall, there's more that could be done to this deck for sure. Um, if you were a person that wanted to really upgrade the deck and take it to the next level, there is a lot more that you could add in here, a lot more combo potential, speed, you could upgrade lands, um, you could remove cards that kind of don't do anything or sometimes don't. But I really enjoy just how this deck plays. Um, I've had a lot of compliments on how the deck runs and people enjoying it. So uh, if you enjoy kind of like a laid back commander, one of the things that's kind of like a value engine on its own, but still has the potential to do stuff, I would consider building Quaza. I don't think it puts a target on your back. I don't think it's an overly powerful deck. I think that it's a commander that is often slept on that you get to steal the game at the end sometimes. So that's my Quaza deck. Let me know what you guys think, if you have any remarks about any of the things, if you just want to make fun of me for my squid hat. Uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you guys on the next one.